Hi, I'm Carrie from Feel Good Teaching. Raise your hand if you have ever said, my science period is too short for labs, STEM challenges, and other hands-on science. Listen, you're not gonna get any judgment from me. I've definitely been there and it's not a good feeling. And during those times that my science class was really nothing more than a glorified nonfiction reading comprehension class, or let's watch other people do demonstrations of science, I never felt good about that. I was always tremendously guilty because we know that's not the right way that science should be taught. And it's not probably why we became teachers in the first place. So I'm the last person to throw stones here, but there is hope. When I found myself caving to the pressures and teaching in a way that felt dissonant with my core beliefs, I was an unhappy teacher. When I found ways to get back in line with what I actually believed, which is that science is so much more than reading comprehension and demonstrations. Science is doing, and students should be doing science as often as possible. How will the next generation of scientists even know what science is if all they've ever done is read about it or watched it? And think back on your own school career. What are the things that stand out to you? I can remember in elementary school doing the clay boats and trying to sink them with marbles. I can recall the egg drop. I can recall several science experiments. But I can tell you what I don't really remember is sitting down and reading the textbook. Now I know I did that for sure, and I'm not suggesting you throw away your textbook unless it's garbage. I'm just saying I didn't take any of those memories with me, but the other ones were indelible and those are formative and those made me love science. So ask yourself the tough question right now. What are you doing in your science class to make students fall in love with science? I surely am hoping you said STEM challenges, but if you aren't doing those yet, Maybe tomorrow's the day. Now you might be thinking that all this sounds very nice, but it's a little pie in the sky given the actual time constraints in your real life. I am sympathetic to that. I've had 40 minute class periods and it is very tough to get in a lab or a STEM challenge in that time period, but it's not impossible. I've put together a few sample schedules that you might be able to use whether you are a self-contained, departmentalized, or an elective teacher. Because let's be real, we have to find a reasonable and practical approach to do right by our students and stop feeling guilty about skipping the very best parts of science. Okay, I know this might not be a very popular idea, but if you're a self-contained teacher, why not try borrowing some time from one of the other subject areas? For me, the amount of times an ELA or math lesson has run over into history or science makes me feel absolutely not one ounce of guilt to take a little bit of that time back and devote it to science so that I can set up my lesson in an ideal way where the students can actually do the STEM challenge and have the discussion, the reflection, the analysis all on the same day. And in the unlikely circumstance where an administrator walks in and wonders why I'm doing science when it's the ELA period, I'll be able to explain that away with the extension activities that are gonna be related to this. I frequently have writing lessons relate back to STEM challenges. I know some of you won't like that and for others it might not even be possible. So here's another idea. The first schedule will work whether you are self-contained or departmentalized, but you have just one 45 minute period a week that you can devote to STEM challenges. So let me walk you through it. What you see on the left is the STEM challenge cycle that I follow for all my challenges. And then on the right, this is how I would propose running your STEM challenges with just one 45 minute period a week. Typically, if I'm going to do one challenge a week, I like to do it on Friday. So what I might do is actually have the students plan the night before. So on Thursday, I would announce the challenge and whether they do that for homework or I just put the idea in their heads, that part is already out of the way so that when we come in on Friday, we're ready to just start building right away. So then on Friday with my 45 minutes, I'm gonna let them build, share, and discuss. Now the next week, I'm gonna come back for the record and reflect design analysis. And I might do that for morning work on Monday or I might assign it for homework or put it in as a center rotation, but I will just hold that for the next week because I don't give homework on Fridays. All the related extension lessons will just be part of my regular classroom instruction, usually in science or math classes from Monday to Thursday the following week. And if you're doing a second iteration, which hopefully you are, then I would put that on the following Friday. Or another thing you might wanna try out if you have a four week month is to do three different STEM challenges, weeks one, two, and three, and then in the fourth week, allow the students to go back and revisit whichever challenge they choose to do a second iteration.